वेरी गुड इवनिंग फ्रॉम ऑर्थो टीवी मॉडरेटर all the panelists boa members audience and outro tv especially the convener of boa dr santul hoda and today's topic is very important and very uh, one of the best topic cardiac health for the doctor we all doctor facing a lot of stress and strain so we are, this topic uh, is very important and our we are very lucky our uh, speaker one of the renowned of uh, one of the renowned cardiologist of bihar dr parveer sira sir and he dm in cardiology uh, i wish you all this is a very beneficial for all the members of the boa and audience so i wish you all for the great success of this program uh, and i request dr sn sir aap sir our respected president to say few words hello good evening am i audible yes sir yes. good evening to you all on behalf of bihar orthopedic association i welcome dr pravi sina cardiologist he is the first dm cardiologist of my town and his rotarian is very popular i welcome our panelists pravin jha as well as pn misra ji and our it cell convener dr samsul hoda we have many question to ask many of our colleague are suffering from cardiac anxiety dr sina will enlighten us about healthy art and tips of the healthy art thank you now i hand over to our moderator thank you sir uh, i mean it's such a pleasure that like we have with us the renowned cardiologist of bihar dr pravir sinha sir and uh, as we all know that like lot of orthopedic surgeon you know like they always stay in stress like stress for the surgery many of them have suffered from covid and you know like they have lot of anxiety issues lot of you know like palpitation issues so like today we have with us dr pravin sinha sir and he will be sharing you know like his slides with us and he will be talking on card cardiac health for the doctors focusing on the doctors so now i invite uh, our cardiologist sir dr pravin sinha sir uh, to start his presentation thank you uh, dr abhishek uh, thank you uh, uh, dr saraf president uh, uh, bihar orthopedic association uh, i also convey my thanks to dr madhusudan the secretary and dr shamsul hoda uh, uh, who is the it cell convener for giving me the opportunity to present my views on this very important topic uh, in this uh, uh, gathering of uh, uh, orthopedic surgeons and other specialties uh, first i must uh, congratulate uh, our orthopedic colleagues orthopedic surgeon colleagues who have uh, done tremendous advances in the field of orthopedics that uh, the management of uh, orthopedic diseases has uh, changed in the last 25 years and we are really proud of our orthopedic colleagues i will also uh, definitely praise uh, bihar orthopedic association indian orthopedic association uh, about the fact that they are uh, celebrating this bone and joint week uh, and uh, uh, they are taking up issues which are very relevant to uh, the public and to the doctors specifically not strictly uh, related to medicine but uh, otherwise also yesterday i watched the program on education and it was so informative so that's i mean kudos to you you have i mean you are you are thinking uh, much forward than uh, many other people and that uh, must be praised now as far as uh, today's topic is concerned uh i'll start sharing my slides i hope uh, all of you can uh, see the slides yeah. we can see sir we can see
cardiac health for doctors is a very important topic for all of us uh, today's discussion i have divided into three parts basically uh, in the first part i will uh, discuss a bit about the basic cardiac structure and function pathology diagnostics and therapeutics including preoperative cardiac assessment of course many things can't be uh, dealt with in detail in a short time but i will try to make it simpler so that uh, uh, doctors from other specialties can also understand it and of course uh, as i uh, as we all know uh, cardiologists and orthopedic surgeons also know that uh, the, there is a relationship between orthopedic and cardiological sciences and i will uh, dwell for a few minutes on this interesting topic also in the second part uh, i will discuss the prevention of heart disease and finally i will try to uh, present some points about maintenance of cardiac fitness for doctors and their families uh, the basic cardiac anatomy uh, we all uh, know uh, most of us are aware of the fact that heart is a four chambered structure uh, um, right atrium right ventricle left atrium and left ventricle the deoxygenated blood goes from right atrium across the mitral valve into the right ventricle ventricle and then through the pulmonary artery into the lungs for uh, oxygenation and then from through the pulmonary veins it comes to, to the left atrium across the mitral valve into the left ventricle and then uh, it's pumped into the aorta by the muscular uh, left ventricle to all parts of the body uh, in this uh, uh, picture we can see the two major coronary arterial trunks uh there are two major coronary arteries left coronary and right coronary the left has got two major branches anterior descending branch and the left circumflex branch and the, this is the right coronary artery heart is a muscular structure the left ventricle is much thick walled than the right ventricle and of course this has implications in many diseases and in particular on the ecg also Uh, how does heart contract basically the cardiac contraction is related to the electrical activity going inside the heart the electrical activity how does it go this is a simplified diagram of uh, the cardiac conduction tissue uh, the impulse the electrical impulse arises in the sa node sinoauricular node and it travels across the atria and then it also travels to the av node and the bundle of phase which is situated in the top of the interventricular septum now this bundle of phase divides into two branches right and left and it distributed distributed through the purkinje fibers in both the ventricles this is uh, through these conductive tissue uh, cardiac impulse travels and then uh, the muscular contraction of the heart occurs because of that uh, this is again uh, an animated diagram showing uh, the Path of the the path the 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 cardiac physiology, uh, the deoxygenated blood in blue coming through the vena cava into the right atrium across the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle and then getting pumped into the pulmonary artery and then after oxygenation in the lungs it comes through the into the left atrium through the across the mitral valve and into the uh, left ventricle. and then it's pumped into the aorta so that it's supplied to uh, all parts of the body uh <clears throat> cardiac diseases are innumerable this is not a comprehensive list of heart diseases but we can name a few diseases which are uh, common and uh, which uh, we should know about uh, at least uh, uh, people of uh, doctors of all specialty uh, must know a little about it Uh, coronary artery disease is a very common uh, uh, disease and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, mm, it can be a acute disease or a chronic disease in acute uh, disease it can be acute coronary syndrome uh, like unstable angina or acute myocardial infarction in chronic disease it can be a stable angina valvular diseases can be rheumatic heart disease or related to it or non rheumatic valvular disease like mitral stenosis regurgitation aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation again this rheumatic valvular disease is of many a times common interest to uh, 
to orthopedic surgeons and uh, cardiologists because many of the cases of rheumatic heart disease, particularly younger people, present with joint pains and they often consult uh, the orthopedic surgeon first. Then the hypertensive heart disease, which is increasingly becoming common, arrhythmias and blocks are an important category of heart disease, such as atrial fibrillation, complete heart block, and cardiomyopathies, such as a dilated cardiomyopathy and many others. At this point, uh, I would like to spend uh, a few lines, uh, speak a few lines on the value of ASO titer in uh, rheumatic diseases. Now, ASO titer is a very important uh, um, uh, investigation um, which helps us in the diagnosis of uh, rheumatic heart disease. But often uh, we fall in a so-called so -called trap. Uh, the patient uh, comes to us, we get an ASO titer done, ASO titer is raised, and we think the patient is suffering from rheumatic fever. It's not always the case. ASO, raised ASO, is basically an, uh, a response to streptococcal, a specific type of streptococcal infection. So even a sore throat, step, uh, a sore throat due to that streptococcal infection can increase the ASO titer. So uh, we must not always think that whenever, an, uh, whenever ASO titer is raised, the patient is suffering from rheumatic fever. There are certain criteria. If they are also present along with raised ASO titer, that, uh, uh, that then there is a strong possibility that rheumatic fever is present. Now, what are the common symptoms of heart disease? Chest pain, as we know, we all know that uh, chest pain um, uh, in acute, uh, acute uh, coronary syndrome, the chest pain is very severe at rest, radiates to upper limbs and jaws associated with sweating. But in chronic uh, stable angina, the chest pain only occurs when the patient uh, makes an effort, walks or climbs stairs or do some um, heavy work. Then presence of edema or dyspnea on exertion and orthopnea. Uh, they are important signs of heart disease. Uh, when the patient sometimes suddenly wakes up at night with severe dyspnea uh, or, and he can't lie flat. So that's an important pointer towards presence of heart disease. Other symptoms can be palpitation, giddiness and syncope. Now, how do we uh, do a basic clinical evaluation and diagnostic workup in a patient, in a patient of uh, heart disease? Uh, I, will, uh, I will be very brief in these and make it as, try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, thorough history and physical examination is very important. Uh, but uh, no, probably, uh, Taking a proper history is uh, an important thing to the maximum extent in, uh, uh, in cardiology. I think uh, no other specialty it is that important as in cardiology because a careful history tells you almost in 75% of the cases tells you the diagnosis and even if it rest of the 25 cases it doesn't tell you the diagnosis. It points towards the pathway you, to, you should take to establish the diagnosis. So a careful history taking uh, is definitely very important along with the physical examination. Um, uh, BP uh, should be taken and of course the basic cardiological point of view investigation are blood glucose and uh, uh, measurement of a lipid profile. Uh, the basic diagnostic work, further work consists of uh, getting an ECG done. We, we all see ECGs, but uh, the point to understand and realize is that ECG is an investigation which has very low sensitivity, except in acute situations like acute myocardial infarction or arrhythmias. If the patient is not suffering from an acute cardiac disease, in 99.99% of the times, the ECG will be normal. So a normal ECG does not rule out heart disease. A patient can be patient may be suffering from a very severe form of heart disease, even with an absolutely normal ECG. So 
the time on teaching that the ECG should be interpreted in the light of uh, uh, clinical situation is very important. So if the patient comes with a normal ECG, it doesn't mean that the patient doesn't have heart disease. Uh, uh, in that respect, of course, a proper history again guides you further. A basic ECG, uh, if you want to understand uh, uh, the, the mechanics, the complexes and uh, intervals, uh, ECG has got, uh, ECG trace has got a P wave and a QRS complex and a T wave. Uh, this is a graph and each small square measures one millimeter in this direction and in this direction. So, the next investigation which we uh, usually do uh, to establish the cardiological diagnosis or do the uh, and to uh, uh, see the cardiac condition is an echo in echo is basically shows the morphology fusion pericardial fusion you can see the valves its conditions and the contractility of the heart or wall motion abnormalities, which part as compared to the other or not. So these are a very important investigation which shows you the morphology of the heart and the basic uh, normal uh, heart looks like this in uh, an echo. This is the left atrium, this is the left ventricle, this is the right atrium, and this is the right ventricle. This is the interventricular septum. Now, one very uh, interesting point is the ejection fraction. Uh, most of the surgeons and I think uh, anesthetic, most of the anesthetists rely quite a lot on the thing called ejection fraction. Now, we must uh, understand a few things about ejection fraction. Um, we asking what is the ejection fraction? Is it below 50 or above 50. If it's below 50, oh, something is wrong. If it's above 50, then oh, everything is okay. It's not that simple. Now, what is ejection fraction? Ejection fraction is basically a measure of the cardiac contractility. It's expressed as left ventricular stroke volume. Stroke volume is the blood pumped in one beat divided by end diastolic volume, that is the blood received in previous beat, multiplied by 100. So how much part of the beat, that is the ejection fraction, how much blood has been ejected. So on an average, normal ejection fraction is 50%, there's no doubt about that. But is it that is it uh, the, uh, the point only on which we should rely to, uh, de to decide about the condition of the patient and to decide about the fitness for surgery? No, because there are a large number of conditions in which the patient can have an ejection fraction above 50%, maybe 70% and 80%, and the patient is suffering from a severe type of heart disease. Say a patient with uh, severe, uh, severe uh, atherosclerotic triple vessel disease, all three arteries blocked, patient has been severe angina, and his ejection fraction, we do an echo, and ejection fraction is 70%, 80%. That doesn't mean that the patient is a low risk patient. It's a very high times we see patients who have an ejection fraction of say 40%. It's, it's not, it does not always mean that the patient is a very high risk, uh, in the very high risk category for surgery. No, it's not that if the patient, if, if a patient who started with congestive heart failure has undergone medical treatment, he had uh, ejection fraction of 20%, 30%. Now with treatment, ejection fraction has improved to 40%. Now, if we assess him, and if we assess that he can climb two flights of stairs and without any symptoms, even if his ejection fraction is 40%, he is a very low risk patient for surgery. So ejection fraction, it's okay that, 50% is a cutoff margin, but it's not and everything below 50% is always bad. So we have to assess the patient clinically, how serious his heart is, uh, how serious his cardiac condition is so that he's assessed properly for uh, surgery. Other 
uh, investigations which we usually do uh, in heart disease are uh, treadmill tests. We all know about for conditions which which arrhythmias which occur infrequently. We do a 24 hours ECG analysis. That's the whole term monitoring and stress echo. One uh, investigation which has recently come up in the last 10 years and so more, uh, more uh, modernized in the last five years is the CT coronary investigation test in which you put in the angiogram of the coronary arteries. And there you can see uh, if there are atherosclerotic obstructions in the arteries. And even you can do a 3D reconstruction of the heart and the coronary, and the patient has to undergo a surgery, uh, any type of surgery, orthopedic surgery, or any other type of surgery. Uh, and we do a CT and you, and his coronary is normal, then he definitely becomes the low risk patient for surgery and he can be safely undertaken for surgery. And finally, uh, this is the conventional invasive angiogram uh, in which we uh, inject a dye in the coronary arteries to directly visualize the coronary arteries and see whether there is any uh, atherosclerotic obstruction. And uh, uh, this test is, uh, I mean, the, the technology of this test is somewhat related to what orthopedic surgeons use. And I think you always use the C arm in your labs. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. Now you begin. There is, I think, some uh, net issues or like uh, some, you know, like uh, your voice is not so clear. Uh, now I can hear you very loud and clear, but like uh, before, like five minutes back, it was not so clear. Uh, you okay. can continue on, sir. You can continue. Okay. And then surgery consists of uh, coronary artery by bypass grafting in which we uh, bypass uh, the, the coronary arteries with uh, arteries harvested from other side and bypass the obstruction. And of course, valve replacements and pacemaker implantations are other types of uh, surgeries. Now, what about uh, uh, the preoperative evaluation? Because uh, often uh, anesthetists and uh, surgeons, are so that uh, and they have to decide whether they are uh, uh, low risk patients for surgery or high risk, so that they can uh, take up them for surgery. Or uh, even if they are high risk, they uh, can they take precautions. Also. The, the detailed uh, preoperative evaluation criteria, uh, I mean, we can't discuss here, but in detail, but of course, there are certain points which uh, I wanted to emphasize uh, are that uh, mild rise of BP does not increase the surgical risk. Uh, if a patient has got uh, very mild, the BP is 145 by 95 
so it's not a high risk patient. So we should not worry about that. Of course, if the if we find a patient with a, a blood pressure of 200 by 110, then definitely the blood pressure should be controlled before surgery takes place. Second thing is a resting ECG is mostly normal and very insensitive. As I said previously, it's very insensitive to detect heart disease. So a simple normal ECG does not mean always that the patient's heart is normal and he or she has to be evaluated further. Then again, often we find uh, um, uh, uh, occasional ectopics, ventricular ectopics or supraventricular ectopics on the ECG, but occasional ectopics are not to be worried about. They occur in almost all normal people, so and they do not increase it. And the ejection fraction, as I discussed previously, um, should be evaluated. Should be evaluated according to the patient's other findings. Not in. I'm isolation. sorry to interrupt, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Like, uh, can you try? One uh, interesting thing I wanted to discuss at this point was. Uh, uh, yeah, Abhishek. Yes, sir. Can you switch up your video because your voice is, you know, like breaking okay, yeah. a lot. Just a, just a second. I mean, such a interesting topic, but uh, there is some breakage in the voice. Let me see. I've stopped my video. Yeah. Let me see. Okay, let's see. Please carry on, sir. So this was an interesting thing uh, which I could find was the link between osteoporosis and cardiovascular disease. Or the further implications of osteoporosis, mainly by the uh, orthopedic surgeons. But there has been a recent interest in the link between osteoporosis and heart disease. Uh, it has been associated with increased cardiovascular mortality, morbidity, and atherosclerosis. Calcification and other substances found in the atherosclerotic plaques, which, uh, which usually cause the obstruction in coronary arteries, have almost the similar composition as that found in bones. And it's thought that shared risk factors, a common risk factor between osteoporosis and cardiovascular disease, some common pathophysiological mechanism and genetic factors could be the reason uh, be, uh, the behind this link between osteoporosis and heart disease. Uh, but as, uh, as uh, you always use vitamin D and calcium supplementation for osteoporosis, unfortunately, it has yet not shown significant benefit in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Though many uh, preparations, uh, drug cardiac drug prescriptions are preparations are coming, which combine vitamin D with those cardiac drugs, but as yet there is no proof that they help in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. But of course, we must know that maintenance of optimal bone mineral density can be important for cardiovascular health also. Now, what about prevention of heart disease? Uh, prevention of heart disease uh, can be uh, dealt in three ways. Number one is awareness about preventive evaluation, lifestyle modification, and care of the morbidities uh, present. Uh, preventive evaluation consists of at least uh, an... Uh, uh, can, you, can you hear me, Abhishek? Yes, yes. Very clearly, sir. Very clearly. Yeah. Now, yeah. Much okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. So, preventive evaluation uh, consists of at least yearly uh, thorough physical examination, which should consist of clinical examination, uh, including measurement of BP, hemoglobin, blood glucose, creatinine, and lipids, lipid levels. Uh, 
uh ecg is usually done part of the routine yearly physical examination but as i said previously it's a very insensitive thing there is no harm in doing an ecg but uh in most of the normal people it won't show any abnormality again a treadmill test stress test is sometimes useful but it has got lo lots of uh, um, fallacies also and uh, only in particular group of people are uh, stress test for for uh, for uh, detection of heart disease for uh, detection of atherosclerotic heart disease can be useful uh, the bp level should be uh, normal bp level should be less than 140 by 90 mm mercury in an average and in, in 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 an average person with no significant other risk factors and uh, when we do a lipid profile the ldl cholesterol which is the most important uh, part of the lipid profile as far as uh, atherosclerotic disease is concerned uh, the ldl cholesterol should be less than 130 of course those uh, who uh, who suffer from some sort of heart disease this level is uh, is 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 still higher and the ldl cholesterol should be reduced further this level is for people who don't suffer from any types of heart disease and the triglyceride should be less than 200 mg per deciliter lifestyle changes consists of uh, physical exercise uh, at least a moderate intensity exercise walking on the uh, driveway on a road or in a field or on a treadmill but a moderate intensity exercise at least 30 minutes per day of course those who are younger who don't have any physical problems and they can sustain uh, even a 20 minutes uh, exercise heart uh, healthy diet this is uh, uh, this this the concepts uh, have changed quite a bit and they keep on changing from year to year in many ways but in general what the current uh, uh, thought is and the current recommendations are that a vegetarian diet or those who are non vegetarian uh, in them a mediterranean type of diet which is mainly a fish fish based diet and uh, a, a low calorie um, uh, milk based diet these are the best types of diet which help in prevention of uh, atherosclerotic vegetarian food for them lean meat like chicken or food with less of saturated fat plenty of fruit and dry fruits uh, these are very should be the very important constituents of an average diet salt uh, salt intake should be kept uh, below 2.3 g sodium per day this comes to about one level teaspoon full of table salt we should use less than this in whatever we eat in the 24 hours time and we must also mind the presence of hidden sodium in many junk and processed and fast food snacks which always are uh, which increase your cardiovascular disease again alcohol consumption of alcohol of course we uh, ours is a dry state but in general if we talk about consumption of alcohol uh, moderate dose uh, uh, of course outside bihar uh, if they take uh, alcohol they should take uh, result in aggravation or production of some new uh, arrhythmic heart disease so a moderate uh, alcohol intake uh will uh, is supposed to do much smoking and tobacco we all know is nothing to specify about it is a strict no no which is a high risk uh, behavior for uh, for development of heart disease hypertension diabetes obesity this uh, should be controlled by appropriate means whether by uh, lifestyle modification drugs or devices or stents and balloons and this should be appropriately controlled relaxation is a very important part uh, of prevention of heart disease 
uh, relaxation can be brought about by uh, modifying your work schedule by uh, by taking uh, do of yoga or relaxation exercises these uh, and taking things easy these are help in relaxation and uh, they definitely help in uh, reducing the chances of development of heart disease now some uh, some uh, added points for uh, these these points are also applicable for doctors but some added points for cardiac fitness for doctors and their social and professional well being medical problems in doctors can occur as uh, commonly so i mean i mean there is no separate management for a specific type of heart disease in the doctors they have the same health issues but there are certain problems that the doctors many times feel that they are invulnerable that they can't develop a disease and they feel that uh, since they have been dealing through years with the patients they feel all powerful they have a feeling at the back of the mind that they are not vulnerable they can't develop the disease but that's not true doctors are also human beings and they also develop the same types of diseases so you should accept we should accept that we are also susceptible to develop a new disease and do some preventive aspect sometimes we are embarrassed to consult our colleagues and that's that is one of the reason many of the many of people ignore their health issues for long and when they consult uh, the colleagues it may be uh, the disease then additional issues such as professional legal patient care family financial these are also produce stress and strain and uh, um, uh, promote the development of many types of disease of course covid is a new uh, thing over the last one and a half years which has aggravated these problems doctors have become more susceptible actually and due to related uh, patient management issues and pressure from the uh, government and from the uh, setup in which they are working uh, it has aggravated their uh, problems and uh, many of the doctors uh, uh, have suffered from uh, disease either from covid directly or from the effects related effects of covid uh, but it's a, a well known fact that doctors often care more for the patient than themselves I mean, they may wash their hands for uh, because they think that the patient that the patients can be harmed if they do not uh, wash their hands but they don't think that even they can be harmed if they don't wash their hands properly or their families can be harmed there's a one there was one uh, study about 10 years back there is one uh, this is a very famous online study, which uh, study which studied uh, uh, in usa these data of course uh, relate to usa but we can uh, extrapolate it to our country also that how happy are the physicians uh, and the happiest ones where were the rheumatologist and dermatologist neurologist luckily we ortho we uh, cardiologist and orthopedic surgeons are somewhere in between so that's a, at least a plus point for us this again a similarity between orthopedics and cardiology and uh, how do physicians rate their own physical health again uh, uh, luckily uh, cardiologist and orthopedic surgeons are on the top of the line of course not the top most top most again dermatologist but uh, most uh, most of the time it was seen that uh, uh, these specialties were in better uh, state of health than uh, others but uh, as far as weight was concerned um in general doctors almost one third of the doctors have got uh, uh, they are overweight and uh, probably they don't take care of uh, their cardiovascular fitness and as a result in overweight and exercise also done almost uh, 
almost uh, one third of the doctors they are they do very poorly if they if you consider how frequently they exercise so this is uh, these are important findings and uh, these uh, these results show that we often don't take care of our health properly and uh, uh, we should also uh, think about this in a proper way. So what is the way out for doctors for maintenance of good health? We should change our attitude towards life, patients, and colleagues, and family. Uh, it's, uh, it's not those that simple, easier said than done. Care has to continue lifelong, but uh, we should take care of us also, and we shouldn't worry excessively um, uh, more uh, more uh, into it because uh, the patients are at risk even after surgery for some time and uh, sometimes uh, uh, peer pressure from uh, pressure from colleagues and family also uh, affects our uh, our life so we should make a balance uh, between these we should follow the preventive aspects of uh, the, the cardiovascular disease. We should take a break, many of at least uh, uh, maybe a short break every four, five months and long break, uh, maybe every eight, 10 months or a year, indulge in some sort of relaxation, social service and your stress. Uh, I personally is also a very active member and Dr. Abhishek, we always feel that uh, doing a social service, whatever, however small it may be, uh, it helps in reducing their stress and it increases your general fitness and cardiovascular fitness also. And don't forget to get uh, medical insurance for the whole family. No, everybody uh, can fall ill at any time. And uh, in this COVID time, it is another point which we can, uh, uh, which is, uh, which this, uh, this issue can't be overemphasized. And don't ever hesitate to consult the colleagues that we are also human beings. We can be affected by any disease and there is no harm in uh, consulting a colleague. Uh, if we think of uh, that, we suspect that we are suffering from a disease. Finally, family is an asset and no time spent elsewhere can be, um, can be superior to it. Uh, no patient, no clinic, no nursing home, no medical faculty is superior to family. And this one point uh, that the time spent with our family it gives you much more uh, pleasure is uh, is very uh, proper then medical organizations like uh, indian medical association or uh, uh, the orthopedic association and cardiac surgery of india can help doctors in their uh, maintaining their fitness by organizing health awareness and uh, starting insurance schemes which gives uh, confidence to doctors and their families to so that they can maintain their health and these are the ways in which i think we doctors can uh, uh, maintain our in general fitness and uh, specifically cardiovascular fitness so that uh, we are able to serve the society and the people in general as long as possible thank you so much for a patient hearing thank you so much praveer sir Indeed, a great talk, and uh, we learned many, many things. Mm, from patient point of view, also we learned many things, and from you know, like our point of view, also we learned many things. Rightly, you said that like attitude of our lifestyle should and need to be changed. I mean, we should have balanced life. First of all, you talked about the preventive measures, which is very important and essential nowadays. I mean, there is no doubt about it. You told that we need to take a break. I mean, I, I mean, yesterday only I was uh, uh, listening to one of my guides and he always tell me that like between two surgeries also plan 
you know, like five or 10 minutes kind of break, try to enjoy that moment because you know, it's not the surgery which will give you pressure. The time lag between that will, you know, like irritate you and will keep you burdened. So always try to take a micro break. According to you also, it's very, very useful. You have always been a source of inspiration for us. You have been associated with many social services, especially Rotary. You are at very high rank in Rotary Club also. And you have always been encouraging everyone in Darbanga, including me, to, you know, like serve people. And definitely it gives a sense of satisfaction to all of us. That is also very important. You know, like at least it gives you some self-respect as well as, you know, like sense of uh, completeness you rightly told that like this is high time that every doctor thinks about everything but they never bothered about themselves i mean they are so i mean i know many of them that like they have not been covered by medical insurance many of our colleagues in our association also i mean they were not covered uh, by medical insurance and when covid happened many of them had many financial issues also so i mean medical insurance is a way ahead there is no doubt everybody should get it covered at least uh, all the medical uh, you know like fraternity people because they are at high risk in in you know like in comparison to the ordinary people so all these things are very important you talked everything very rightly now i you know like if anybody wants to ask any question uh, i mean if anybody wants to ask any, I can see Dr. Praveen Jha sir also there, like uh, he's my senior uh, from good evening, good, evening. Uh, good evening, good evening. Good to see you, sir, after a long time. Papa, you want to ask anything? Oh, uh, uh, it is quite clear from Praveen Ji's side. The talk was very elaborate and uh, informative. As a surgeon, I was uh, scared of finding of ECG and eco finding. Now I am quite confident that I can go ahead with PC finding and eco finding. Clinical assessment is more important than eco and ECG. It is now quite clear to me. As a, as, as a surgeon, I appreciate this. Thank you, Pranji, for nice talk. One thing I can also say as an orthopedic surgeon, EC is kind of, you know, like we don't understand ECG very well. One thing we see is ejection fraction and today I get to know that like many times it happens that like even if your ejection Abhishek. fraction is hello, even if your ejection fraction hello. is on the side then also I mean we can you know, like take up such kind of cases for surgery. So that's very informative. Many times we cancel such kind of cases and many times you know like we are scared to do such kind of cases. So thank you for everything. So one, one thing I wanted to ask that like Post-COVID cardiac related issues are now very common in medical fraternity. I mean, they suffer kind of lack of sleep, anxiety disorders and all. So, I mean, uh, do you have, uh, I mean, first I will start with, in fact, Praveen Jhasar, like both of them are cardiologists. So like uh, post-COVID cardiac issues are quite, uh, quite common and many of our colleagues have, uh, you know, like anxiety issues, lack of sleep, palpitation uh, issues. Any specific measures for such kind of people you want to, you know, like? I'll start with Praveen Jha, sir. Good evening, uh, Praveen, sir. Uh, Good evening. The most important thing you already discussed that ejection fraction. So the, I get a number of calls that ejection fraction is less, so we should go for the surgery or not. So, as you rightly said that it's the symptom or to be precise, the functional capac uh, capacity of the patient that decides the preoperative uh, precautions to be taken. And uh, we say in this uh, COVID area, see COVID, actually it is a, uh, you can say it's a pre-thrombotic state. And the COVID uh, already, uh, you know that there is a, a high titer of D-dimer, so there is increased risk of thrombosis in COVID patients. So we should always keep this in mind. And the most of the patient that come in the, uh, after COVID are due to palpitation. So there are some reasons of palpitation. One is the anxiety and other is that some patients develop dilated cardiomyopathy 
or myocarditis in this uh, post covid so we should do an echo of these patient to rule out whether the covid has affected the heart and second the precautions precaution as such there is no means breathing exercise is the most important because when your lung uh, function is okay then your tachycardia and other things will settle automatically but uh, if a patient has uh, affected with covid then we should do d dimer and if the d dimer is in the higher side then use of anticoagulants is uh, necessary all right all right perfect perfect sir sir uh, praveen sir can you mm. can you hear me sir yeah yeah so yeah. any your recommendation sir for such kind of cases does yoga or any lifestyle changes work in such kind of cases i mean yeah uh, uh, yeah i agree uh, with dr praveen that uh, uh, most of the cases except for those who have suffered from post covid uh dilated cardiomyopathy or myocarditis except for those most of the patients which even uh, we cardiologists are seeing are mostly uh, probably anxiety related uh, many patients say even 2 3 4 months after covid suffering from covid they come come back with chest pain with sweating with palpitation with ghabrahat Uh, most of them i find that they are not suffering from uh, any cardiovascular disease most of them don't have even uh, even even uh, significant fibrosis on a uh, repeat ct it's mainly probably the psychological part uh, of the um, of the syndrome post covid syndrome which is troubling them most and i i don't have any data to support that but uh, definitely i suppose uh, yoga yoga or uh, relaxation <clears throat> and exercise general exercise and reassurance helps them definitely and of course those who have uh, a really post covid uh, cardiomyopathy they need specific uh, treatment and uh, as dr praveen very rightly said uh, assessment by d dimer and anticoagulation or uh, addition of a statin or uh, aspirin sometimes can help all right sir perfect perfect sir so thank you so much for sir uh, for this talk sir and uh, now uh, i will Yeah, we have it with uh, Dr. Madhusudan sir. He is traveling, by the way. Uh, one question, a... one question from Parveer sir. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Tell me, please. Our engineer, our engineer, orthopedic surgeons are facing a lot of financial problem. They are struggling day by day, uh, going to the medical college, going to his clinic. So they are there are lot of stress and strain. How they will prevent the cardiac problem? How will save the his heart? is or their hearts from these problems later on they may be yeah. suffer from is or young gestation very yeah 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 i agree a uh, very pertinent question sir in fact uh, we are seeing that uh, say the neat pg is delayed by almost 7 8 yeah. 9 months and Those graduates are suffering because of that, and of course, who those who have qualified and become a specialist, uh, as you said, that uh, uh, I mean they have started it and uh, they have got a lot of work to do. They are they have got financial obligations, but uh, I think uh, uh, probably one very important thing is to uh, make them explain, and uh, probably this is. this should be done by uh, seniors like you or uh, dr saraf sir uh, who who are so much of experience so much who have got so much of experience and who have come through uh, through all those struggle that uh, today what they are they have not become in one day it's years of struggle hardship that they faced and so if they expect that uh, they can be become like them in uh, maybe months or one or two years it's not possible so they must have patience patience of course uh, we realize that 25 years back or 50 years back uh, we didn't have so much of uh, distractions 
like uh, mobiles, foreign travel, and this and that. Now there are a lot of distractions, which everybody wants uh, uh, wants a, 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 a part of the cake, uh, but you can't get it all in one go. So wait and watch, do your effort, maintain your health, try to be realistic, uh, try to understand that everything takes time, um, um, take proper, proper good nutritious diet, do exercise, do yoga, and take things easy. And do, I mean, you must labor hard, but don't be, I mean, just, uh, just run after money. That is probably one thing which should be taught by all of us seniors to younger trainees so that they have a very bright future ahead. Thank you. Very well said, sir. Very well said. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Sir. Thank yeah. you. Health is one thing that like which need to be taken care of all through a uh, career. You can sometime you it can go down and anytime you can work hard and you can you know like uplift your career. But health is one thing which will be constant throughout your life. So definitely in this, and in this COVID COVID time. I think age is no bar. We, we see yeah. day, in, day out young people uh, being affected by the disease. So, I mean, we should take all the precautions, whether young or old, we should, everybody should take precautions. Yes, sir. Thank you. So now I, now I invite uh, Dr. Madhusudan to, uh, you know, like for Thanksgiving uh, to Pravid Sina, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible, but the Sudan, you are audible. Nothing to worry. So I think he's he's traveling. I will do his part. Samsul uh, will do his part. Samsul will. Okay, so I will conclude the session, sir. I mean, thank you so much, Praveen, sir, for joining us. Thank you from Bihar Orthopedics Association. Thank you from. Uh, you know, like Darbanga Orthopedics Association. Uh, it was indeed a marvelous talk. We learned a lot. And uh, I mean, thank you for joining us. Uh, um, uh, with this, we'll end the session, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. 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 Good night.